let's get to today's action and all the naughty bits. Adam Paddy, Index IQ Advisor CEO, says, look, it's time to hedge because of pullback. Oh, yeah, it's coming. But he has some alternative investments to play that downturn. And Larry Shover in the pits of the CME. Larry, let's begin with you. An interesting day, very choppy again as it was yesterday. Uh, but I guess we're all just kind of getting ready for the jobs number on Friday, right? I think you're right. Right now, it's a struggle to the taper, as it were. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for a comet to strike Earth, and I think the people around me feel the same way. We all know it's going to hit, we, it, but the impact of it is very, very unclear. I mean, let's consider the fact that at some point, the Fed's going to have to reset rates higher than inflation. At some point, the Fed's going to have to retreat or withdraw from the capital markets. There's going to be a reshuffling of the deck chairs. It's very unclear, though, how it's all going to turn out. And I think that's why we're seeing this little volatility that we've seen today. Why, Larry, is the market not interpreting any kind of scaling back of large-scale asset purchases as a positive? It would mean that the economy is finally finding some firmer footing. I think you're right, but I think there's a slow growing consensus that feels like there will be some tapering. However, we're at stall speed. We are growing, although we are growing at stall speed, and somehow those can manage to work together. We're not going to continue to see double digit returns, probably more like single digit returns than double di digit volatility. At least that's what I'm interpreting from the market behind me. But, Larry, what's interesting to me is every time we start to suspect that maybe this market is going into a correction mode that's been talked about for, frankly, years, people jump back into the market because they're buying on the dips, and it doesn't seem like we ever get that correction. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, it's climbing this huge wall of worries. I joined the bearish camp back in late February, thinking it was time to cut back a little bit, and look where that got me, not very far. Uh, it seems like because our growth is just good enough to keep us going, but it also requires the Fed to continue easing. That's giving us a fertile environment for the stock market to grind higher, and that's what people are worried about going forward. Larry, you're not alone. Don't worry. Uh, Adam Patty has gotten <laughs> cautious here. He's joined us now, right? And, and Adam, what makes you concerned, and are you not worried about what, say, for example, Jeannie Wyatt, who just 10 minutes ago on the 3 p.m. said, look, you've got to be in because the liquidity is rushing in, and you're trying to go upstream. It's not going to work. Well, I'm looking at the fundamentals and everyone's got their own opinion. But if you look at the market, we are in the midst of the longest bull market in history without a 5% correction. We have a bond market that has been overextended, in my opinion, for 18 months. We've got rising interest rates and we've got the Fed pulling the punch ball away. That is a message, I think, for uh, people to get cautious and really be careful about the sectors we're choosing to invest in now. So, Adam, that leads me to, the, to that question. What exactly do you like? What should investors be looking, back, uh, looking for in the event of this pullback? Well, I, I like sectors that uh, have done poorly instead of the ones that have already had a major run-up. Uh, commodities generally have done, had a poor uh, 18 months, particularly year-to-date. Returns on a broad commodities have not done well. A lot of that's due to uh, minimal GDP growth globally and uh, lack of stabilization in the United States and China. I see that as an opportunity now to get into a broad commodity play, something like GRES, which is a great ETF to play that. The ag space is a great play, uh, play on that as well. You're right. The GRES has underperformed the market. It's up about 7% year to date, up about 5% year over year. But people still have to eat, and you want to go into these unloved areas. Um, you also are very interested in REITs, real estate investment trusts, which I, I would say are not necessarily out of favor lately. Well, REITs have had a great run over the last 18 months, um, as opposed to commodities who, which have not. But remember, we're bouncing off a very low bottom in the REIT space. So we've, we've seen a, a big resurgence in the, in the prices there, um, but the yields are very, very robust. And now given the, the pullback over the last couple of weeks in the REIT uh, share values, it seems to be a nice entry point for investors who want to lock in a nice yield. There's two tickers I like there in particular. There's VNQ, which is a Vanguard ETF, which is for large cap plays and of course for small caps which are the hidden gems in the market that have twice the dividend yield and have put up twice the performance roof ROOF. Larry let me bring you back in I wanted to talk about the dollar we saw a strong dollar today that can be a problem especially for the commodities sector uh, what do you expect for the dollar going forward it seems as always to be the safe haven um, but we're kind of the best of the worst, aren't we? Yeah, I think we are. And I think long term, the dollar is going to continue to go a little bit higher only because uh, the problems in Europe and just the rest of the central banks continue to ease. I think, you know, again, like 
we're a piece of driftwood, Europe's a piece of granite, and they're both going to hit the bottom at some point. I just think Europe will hit bottom first. So I think with that said, I think long-term dollar strength all the way. Yeah. Except that uh, anything that happens with the dollar affects other currencies. Right now, I think we saw a dollar thirty-one print with the euro, which was a little yeah. stunning to Dang. see the euro strong once again. That defies logic, does it not? So I get concerned about being in, say, for example, a currency market. But currencies are going to be in play if the Fed's in play. Yeah, and I'm looking more long term. I mean, short term, you're exactly correct. We had PMIs come out in Europe pretty good. You had uh, more rumors of what Draghi's going to say. Maybe he's going to pull out another miracle. So it's right now, it's short-term <laughs> consolidation, digestion. Long-term dollar, definitely bullish against the euro, uh, the euro cross. Very good. Adam, you, to you finally, what one area are you not touching with a 10-foot pole? Well, that's a good question. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I think the S&P is overextended. I think it's time to take money off the table and uh, see what's happening in the fall. Adam, good All advice. Right. And same with you, Larry. We will check in with Larry in just a few minutes to see how those S&P futures close. So once again, no 21 Club. No, which is a great restaurant, by the way. Uh, in, yeah, love it. That, that's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> if you love something, set it free. The S&P futures are closing. Let's head back down to Larry Shover in the pits of the CME to find out what they're telling us. Larry. Well, right now, we're trying to find news when there really isn't any. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of noise and plenty of interpretation of that noise. But by and large, except for today, U.S. equity market seems pretty inoculated to all the headlines. That said, the growth versus tapering debate is raging right now. That's what's going on behind the surface. And if growth can remain where it is, we can taper a little bit, and the equity market will not suffer. But that is what the debate is going on right now. It's a difficult line to walk, Larry. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank it you, is. Larry.